Hello beautiful Libra and welcome to your horoscope for May of 2020 where Libra this month not only do we have 40% of our planets in retrograde and heading into retrograde which means we're going to have a slowdown you've maybe even been able to start to feel or be a little bit perceptive to some of the slowdown energy that's creeping its way in but also it is a month where we get to pay attention to your ninth house because it is absolutely loaded it is so strong for you this month in terms of things that are trying to move forward and also having the Venus retrograde there which is actually asking you to go back over the value of something so that you can kind of course correct it or bring it to its highest good so it's actually a month that I think is not only going to be very good but it's a month where in the slowdown you have enough space to do the review while also having enough planetary support to take some things forward that actually support the revisions that you're working on in the first place now something I do want to point out before we jump in and talk about the dates and what's coming in all of that good jazz is that Pluto actually entered into his retrograde last month. Now Pluto in the general horoscope is the ruler of Scorpio which will live in your second house of the general chart and I tell you that because with Pluto in retrograde I still think that this is a month where things are good for you financially or they can just kind of be what they have been but they'll also be slowed down and it's also an energy with Scorpio and Pluto living in the second house before you make a big investment whether it be that you invest yourself completely in a relationship or you spend that money you want to be mindful and you want to be knowledgeable that of, of all that is considered and all that is a part of the investment that you're making please be cautious over this next handful of months to just make sure you have all of the details and everything and just know that financial well-being I think is still coming your ability to actually do some saving if you'd like to do that I think is coming but it may feel very very slow with that Pluto retrograde so you can kind of consider that as well as we look at the rest of the retrogrades this month which house do they rule in the general and you may see some slowdowns there and you can do that in your own chart as well all right, Libra, let's get in here and talk about what's happening in May. So right at the beginning of the month, we've got a full moon happening in the energy of Scorpio. Now this is going to light up your second house. So it's just, just next door. Okay. Now the second house is about money, the money that we go out and we make the money that you possess, the possessions that you have, but it's also about relationship. It's also a little bit about your relationship to the things that you value, your self-esteem, your creative talents, all of these things that we go out and they have value to us not in the sense of like this is my belief value but it's an actual thing and it's got some material value to me okay now the full moon says that in this area of your life something needs to be ended acknowledged or adjusted we need to create a shift here and how we're going to do that are with Scorpio properties right so this is going to bring our awareness because the full moon is just a ton of light it's just all the light right so whether it's subconscious unconscious you just haven't been able to see it whatever it is Scorpio's energy is going to make you very aware of your deepest desires or the struggles that you're having to fulfill that desire. Where are you power struggling maybe in the financial area or in the areas of value in your life? What desires do you have here? Do you want to grow financially? Would you like to learn to invest? Do you want your housing area to look a little bit different? Would you like different possessions? Also, where is your self-esteem, Libra? I think that this is a really important question when we're looking at the full moon. And also, on the other side of that, where are you power struggling that may be standing in the way of you having exactly what you'd like to have in this area? So that full moon will light that up for you to take a look at it, okay? On the 11th, it's a busy day. First of all, we've got Mercury moving into the energy of Gemini where he is very, very comfortable because he's in rulership and domicile over here. So happily floating through your ninth house, being curious, this makes you a better communicator in this area. It also in Gemini, Gemini is perception. So you may be perceiving information a lot differently here. And this is important to understand because the ninth house is publishing, marketing, broadcasting, but it's also about faith. It's also about your belief system, right? Um, it's like, what are you thinking into your own reality, whether you're conscious of it or not? What is your thought process going on over here? But I also think that the ninth house, of course, because it is about international things, international business, things that are foreign to us, higher education, different languages, stuff like that. When Mercury's here, we're able to be real perceptive and receptive in terms of information here. So I also feel like if this is a place where you've been wanting to start that podcast, you've been wanting to 
do that new marketing scheme. Maybe you're even Gemini as a traditional ruler of the third house. So if you were wanting to put a house out for sale or you wanted to sell something and it needs some marketing behind it, this would be a wonderful energy to help you there, okay? But also think about your faith and think about your thinking. You may be perceiving things or learning things much differently while Mercury is here in Gemini and you would absorb it really very well. Now also on that same day, Saturn is gonna take its retrograde. Saturn's going to begin its retrograde at one degree of Aquarius, so over here lighting up the fifth house space. So it started to show you <clears throat> since March some things that are happening in the fifth house, right, which is children, it's romance, it's taking a risk, it's conception of your own thing. Where do you, where's your passion, where's your joy? These things have been starting to work out in the fifth house. And now as um, Saturn comes into this retrograde, it's going to go back over into the fourth house. Now you've spent two and a half, three years working on the things in this Capricorn energy um, in this fourth house. As Saturn retrogrades here, you're going to be going back over Libra, things you've already been seeing, dealing and working with, but you're doing it with the answer of taking it seriously right and saying can I build a solid foundation on this once the Saturn energy moves on it's going to ask you to get serious about your future your long-range plans with this particular area and I think you've been doing the building you've been learning and now Saturn's just going to come back and make it solid because as he's shown you a sneak peek being here in Aquarius of why you will need that to be solid you go back to make sure that you have solid good good foundation and good cement you have everything you need to make solid cement over there so you can stand upon it later so between this fifth and this fourth house, the house of a solid foundation and new beginnings, you'll be cleaning that up during the Saturn retrograde and it is nothing but good, okay? On the 13th, also a busy day, we've got Mars entering into the energy of Pisces, so that will light up your sixth house area. But then we've also got Venus stepping into her retrograde where she will begin the retrograde at 21 degrees of Gemini and she will end it at 5 degrees of Gemini. So make sure you grab your chart so you can look at these degrees and know exactly what you're working on in your chart, okay? Mars in Pisces here, lighting up the sixth house. With Mars in Pisces, Mars is action and energy, assertion, movement, my desires, right? So in the energy of Pisces, also joining Neptune in your sixth house, I think that health for you this month, whether it be the physical health of the body or mental health and wellness, I think it's okay this month. I don't think it's the strongest. It's hard for it to be at its strongest when Neptune is here, right? But now Mars, even our assertion energy is here and he's like, I don't know. I mean, I kind of feel good. Yeah. I mean, I guess we could work out. It's always good to be in motion when Mars is entering into a certain house in your life. So in the sixth house, can you move your body, but can you move your body in a creative way, right? Can you take care of your health in ways that are creative, maybe even between the worlds? Can you write? Can you journal? Can you chant? Can you take care of animals, right? The sixth house and the twelfth house, we typically have things going on with animals. Um, I also think in your daily routines, if you feel a little bit off kilter and you're like, I don't know, I'm just letting intuition drive the bus. What should I be doing next? That's something you could find happening here. Just make sure that, you know, as this, as this energy is traveling through here, that you're just kind of clear about the fact that you might not be completely clear. Now, another thought I'm having here, and I just want to share this, is that because Mars is actually one of the rulers in the general of your seventh house, that's where Aries lives, so it tells us about relationships. You may actually be attracted to different healthcare professions or healthcare professionals, right? Mars is going to bring in this energy of relationships and, and who you're interacting with and stuff like that, so it could be somebody in a healthcare field it could be something in an animal field you could just something really different that adds value and adds action and adds movement to the relationships of your life so pay attention to that i look forward to seeing how that manifests for you put that in the comment section down below okay now venus during her retrograde venus in retrograde we're going back over we're revisiting reuniting reconnecting reevaluating things that have to do with relationships things that have to do with our own personal value. How do you value the things that you have, including yourself? Um, and our money, right? Our finances this is a very financial house. Now, when Venus is in retrograde, we highly suggest you don't go out and make some big purchase. And if you do have to make some big purchase, keep your receipts so that you can give it back in case it doesn't work out. Make sure you've read all the fine print, have somebody else look over it with you if you need to do that. This is just, we try to recommend this because 
Venus, you want her value indicator like fully on and when she's retrograde, you don't have it in forward motion. Now, it's, if it's something that you had already been working on um, and it's coming to fruition in the Venus retrograde, that's usually okay, but still keep all your paperwork if you need to. Now, this is going to light up your ninth house space. Again, we see that this is a space and a place of power for you, okay? So Venus is going to ask you here in the ninth house, what's the value of your thinking? What is, is what you've been thinking, is what you have been studying, is what you're teaching, is what you're learning, is what you're communicating out into the world. What's the value of that? Is it serving you, right? This is going to be a really important question, I think, to answer at this particular time, because if you've got a certain mind frame or you've got a certain attitude, you've got a certain level of faith that's not actually making the days easier, brighter, fuller, more inspired for you, this may be something to reevaluate at this time. Certainly, too, I think it asks if you are taking on too many things, right? Like, are you studying 100 different courses so you're not actually able to show up present and allow the value of the content to be presented to you a major part of learning which i know from personal experience you know um is not just the getting the information it's the absorption time so have you taken on too much where you can't actually absorb here now of course venus retrograde is phenomenal and just completely known for bringing back old lovers into your life old financial things and things like that so if they do come back into your life it'll be for healing maybe even for resolution just be mindful take it slow See what this person, place, or thing is about so that you know that after June 25th, it's got the staying power to stick around, okay? On the 14th, Jupiter is going to head into his retrograde. Now, this is going to light up your fourth house. Jupiter will begin the retrograde at 27 degrees of Capricorn, and he'll end it in September at 18 degrees of Capricorn, okay? And again, this is in the fourth house, so an area you've already been looking at. But remember, during the retrograde, it's like, hey, we've got some things to, to finish up, to finish making solid. Jupiter here is going to ask you to be honest, Take an honest evaluation in your fourth house, home, family, real estate, property, your own psychological foundation, what makes you feel secure with w relationships with women in your life, right? With relationships with your past, right? Do you have a solid connection? What are your strengths and your weaknesses in this area? Jupiter is also a very technological energy. So one of the other things I keep thinking of is truly like if this is a time where you need help getting technology into your house or understanding it, Jupiter is going to ask you where you've been presenting in a way that's overconfident or you haven't been saying anything at all. And now you've got to use the wisdom of Jupiter and say, I need help, right? We build wisdom through experience and the experience of saying, I need help or I need more training in this particular area or I need whatever you need. Jupiter is going to ask you to go back over that because, um, I also think that Jupiter in a professional capacity is trying to show up a little bit for you here too. So do you have everything you need to be professional and get the things done that you need to or to be um, consistent in what you're doing? So answer those questions during the Jupiter retrograde, which I think I said it, but is done September 13th. All right, on the 20th, we're going to have the sun move into the energy of Gemini. On the 22nd, we're going to have a new moon happening in the energy of Gemini. Now, all of this is happening, and of course, it's lighting up this ninth house space, but I want to point out as well that even though um, Mercury is in Gemini and it's comfortable and he's happy, he's in domicile here, Mercury is going to move into a state that we call out of bounds as of the 17th, which means as you're thinking as you're studying, as you're speaking, as you're traveling, as you're evaluating faith and things like that for yourself, as you're publishing and marketing, you're doing it outside of your normal sphere. Maybe you're actually attracted to information that hasn't really been on your radar and that is nothing but good because you cannot grow if you've just got all the same stuff around you, right? You've got to look outside of that. So as the sun and the moon come together at this new moon here, anything is possible. This is your place in your space for a fresh start. Plant your seeds of intention to begin in something here and maybe it's even out of bounds it's out of your normal comfort zone it's not the way you would have normally done something right this is a beautiful energy to welcome into your space and allow these new possibilities to take hold i also think about gemini being the energy that likes to study it likes to be social and it likes to study but in studying maybe you're studying something new right or you're welcoming in that new information by studying it but because gemini is such a social energy as well i do think that there's a a fair amount of healing and information that comes to you this month through social outlets like be social this month in order to get the information that you need to advance yourself forward okay 
As we end this month, we are going to end with Mercury still out of bounds, but moving into that energy of Cancer. So now this is going to light up the tip top of your chart. He's moving into your 10th house. So as we travel into June and into eclipse time, your 10th house is going to be a house of power for June, but it all kicks off right here on the 28th, 29th, depending on where you are in the world. Um, of May. Now when Mercury moves into the energy of Cancer and it's at the tip top of your chart, one of the things we know is that emotions are very involved in the decisions that you're making because Mercury doesn't only want to communicate here. He wants to make some decisions. So one of the questions I think you're making decisions on is in your career, in who you are in the world, in how you've been doing things, what you're known for. Um, what's home for you? right? Like what's grounded? What's secure? Where do you feel nurtured? What kind of nurturing do you have to give? Emotions play a really big role in this. Where do you need to go back to the past with that Cancerian energy? Where do you need to connect with women? Or where do you need to connect um, with people who can support and nurture you in this career area in order for you to have everything that you need? But Mercury here will serve to make the decision to actually speak up for what you need to maybe speak up to the family, speak up to the boss and say, I need help, I need training here, I don't know how to do that, whatever it is. It's a month where I think that Mercury really improves your um, emotion, your ability to communicate what's happening emotionally as well, and therefore it steps you forward in this particular area of your chart. And we'll talk so much more about that as we travel through June as well. Just know that some of that is gonna kick off the 28th, 29th of March, okay? All right, Libras, I hope you're doing exceptionally well, and I truly hope that you will check out the collaborations on the channel. I've decided to call them Eat and Greets. So we're gonna have a snack and invite a fellow astrologer over to the Cyber House, where we're not only gonna talk about topics, but some of the um, collaborations, we're gonna actually teach you a skill or an astrological technique. Because remember, astrology, the practice itself, is technical. There's an actual practice to it. If your intuition gets involved in there as well, that's absolutely beautiful, but it is technical. So we've got skills to teach you as well. Coming up, Terrence Gardino, Patrick Arundel, Gemini Brett will be over, Elizabeth Grace, who I'm so excited to bring to you guys as well. I'm excited about everybody, um, but she and I have a similar uh, belief on some astrological concepts, so I'm totally stoked to bring her to you as well, and many more. Go back and watch Nadia Shah, Brian Coulter. They're all up and ready and available for you, okay? All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you a ton, and I will see you next month. Bye, everyone.